All right, Mayor. A couple weeks left and change. Where's your Where's your head at as you, you close out your term? You know, I'm feeling really proud of the work we've been able to accomplish, particularly in the area of COVID, um, but some other really fundamental things for Seattle. And I'm hopeful for the future. I really hope that Bruce Harrell is able to come in, that people give him the support he needs to go to work, to bring our city to the next level of recovery. A lot of people like to label other people as you know, with the legacy. What? How do you define your legacy? You know, I think first and foremost, my time as mayor has been defined by COVID-19. It has been the hardest time our city's ever been through. And we were the first in, we had no handbook, no guidance, no help from the federal government. And every time we asked the people of Seattle to step up, they did. Whether it was helping small businesses or making sure our seniors could get hot food to then standing up the first in class testing for our city uh, where we gave over 1.3 million tests and 60% of our residents used it. To being the first in the country to get 70% vaccination, where now almost 90% of our city has started at least their first dose. So Seattle, I think when it's written, will be the city that got it right. We have the lowest incidence of disease, hospitalization, and mortality rate of any city in America. And that didn't just happen by accident. What do you wish would have gone differently? You know, I wish that we hadn't had the pandemic. Um, I think that it, it stopped and halted and delayed so much of the progress we were making. But even through the pandemic, we had to make sure that we could continue the progress. So we continued on Climate Pledge Arena and got it done, got it open, have a new Kraken team. We kept moving forward on the waterfront park, made sure that happened. Um, in the four years that I've been mayor, $2.5 billion of affordable housing something like 7,600 new units, the most production we've ever had in our city since the housing levy was passed. And the Seattle Promise, two years free college for every Seattle student that we're now expanding. Yesterday we announced that we'll have a four-year degree at our colleges for computer sciences. So our Seattle high school students can go in, get college for free, come out with a degree that they, they can have a family wage job. Um, so there's been a lot, I think, of progress in these four years that once people get through this pandemic, they're going to say, we came through it pretty strongly. What didn't you know about the job that you learned here in the last four years? I don't think anything could have prepared us for the scopes and scale and ferocity of the pandemic. Um, and the fact that in the first part of it, it was done against probably one of the most hyper-politicized political environments in our country. I think those two things together were really uh, a, a very volatile and, and dynamic situation. And I don't think anyone could prepare for that. Lay on top of that after the murder of George Floyd and the, the significant number of protests and the call for more equity, those things coming together were incredibly challenging, not just for me as mayor, but for everybody in our city. We were grappling with really hard issues. There, there have been people who have told me they think that this is a thankless job. That why would anybody ever want to be mayor of Seattle? Just all the stuff you have to deal with, the, the, the dealing with uh, city council that is increasingly uh, political and, and, and loud and, and, and has a lot of people that um, either come to City Hall or, or go elsewhere to make a point. Uh, do, you, do you think it's a thankless position? So I think there's two parts to that question. The first is I do think we need to change our civic dialogue in the city. I think we've gotten to the point where everything is so angry and people no longer can find ways to collaborate and work together. It isn't just, you can't just disagree with anyone anymore. They have to be the enemy or they get villainized. So I think we do have to fix that. But being mayor, there's lots to be thankful for. Um, just like I said yesterday, one of the, at our, our announcement for the new college program, a young man who came here from Africa, his family had nothing. He was able to pull him, pull him into school. He had teachers that helped him, his family helped him. And now he's gonna be one of the first to graduate with our computer science degree. Um, and has, has talked about his interest in AI and robotics. Every day I'm in this city, I see stories of inspiration and hope. And I think that's what we have to remember in this city is it's was, during the pandemic, look, everyone hated it. It was so hard. Um, but at the same time, there were these glimpses of joy and light that I think that that's what we have to really focus on. And I hope into the new year, 
that people can really look at what do we have in common and what are our common goals and aspirations and that we start the, the recovery is not just an economic recovery I think it's really a recovery of spirit. As far as public safety you have this really interesting perspective having been in the the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, been in the Justice Department, uh, tried to come to this solution with the city of Seattle uh, and, and then being a mayor and, and trying to deal with Judge Robart and, and try to get out from under the consent decree and, and hearing what he says it seems like the city's going backwards and here we are now getting close to a decade of, of talking about this. Do you, do you think that there'll be a resolution anytime soon there? I hope that there will. I have continued as mayor to meet regularly with the court monitor and just did it recently to say okay I won't be here but we still need a strong path forward and I think that they're doing a series of assessments now to see under the terms of the consent decree how we fared but they want to take that out of the public because what we learned one thing is without a sense of public trust there's no legitimacy in a police department here or anywhere else and so I think having that public engagement is going to be really important but I think those assessments will show the Seattle Police Department has done really well in some areas and in other areas we need to continue to do work as other police departments you know for example in crowd management we saw last year that there was so much more that we could do to get it right um, but we weren't alone in America I mean I think every city and I've talked to mayors they've been grappling with it I also say this, public safety is at risk in the city and I'm hoping that the new mayor coming in with the city council is able to have a conversation about what people really need in every neighborhood in this city and not just as a political bumper sticker. We have lost too many officers, it takes too long for 911 to come and if we want more officers to come we have to let them know we appreciate the work they're doing. Yes, they have to be well trained. They have to have constitutional policing. They have to make sure that they are community based. But we need police officers. We need alternatives to policing, but we also need police. Why is public safety a risk? Well, you know, if you look at a city like ours, you know, there's been a range of studies, but that ranges anything from 1,400 to 1,600 officers is what you need for patrol in a city of our size. Um, but we have only about a thousand deployable officers and so that puts enormous pressure on those officers it causes more overtime to happen the response times can be slower um, and and just the lack of presence of police sometimes can encourage criminal conduct in an, in an area so obviously it's got to work with community-based organizations police aren't the only answer but they have to be part of the answer so sports sports I, I know you like sports and it uh, very early on in your term, it almost defined your term because you you walked right in and were able to sign a, a deal to renovate to then Key Arena, the, what is now Climate Pledge Arena. You're able to get the NHL to award a franchise. You know, this is uh, some, some people that are civically engaged look at this and say, hey, this is not the biggest issue in Seattle. It's homelessness. It's It's public safety. It's affordable housing. Why has this been a an issue that's been important for you during your term. You know, I, one thing I love about Seattle is we treat the phenomenal as if it's commonplace. That you had a city in the middle of a pandemic able to keep on track to build a world-class arena with zero public dollars and open it right at, during the pandemic and bring a new hockey team is phenomenal. And anyone who's been in there or goes in there, they'll see. It's not just great for concerts and, and sports. It's going to be one of the great convening places in Seattle. Having hockey here, I think, is really great for the city. It's great for youth. We've, we've lacked that before. And we're going to get the Sonics back. And I think having those kinds of teams is always good for city. People can fight about a lot of different things, but if their team's playing well, they're all for the team. Um, you know, I can walk through that arena and I see people who, you know, give me a high five that I know are thinking, you know, they're probably not a political supporter, but they're for the Kraken. Um, same as the Seahawks. When you're there, you're a 12. So when is Seattle going to get the Sonics back? We talked in January. You said you were very optimistic after talking with NBA Commissioner Adam Silver. I am very optimistic and I will be really disappointed if Bruce Harrell can't do it in his first term. Because I've said to Bruce, he would be the sixth mayor to not bring the Sonics back. Oh, I, they're coming back. Any idea, time-wise? 
You know, I think it's really going to depend on whether we get an expansion team or if a team's able to move. Really unlikely a team would able to move. As you know, there's a couple that are kind of teetering. Um, but ironically, I think the NBA learned from moving the Sonics that moving a team has a lot of complications. Um, so I think a lot of it's going to depend on the economics coming out of the pandemic and the NBA owners now are open to it. But I think they, they, they'll come to Seattle. You can't come to Seattle and not want to be part of it. Um, it it's, it's even coming out of the pandemic and as hard as it's been, we, our upside for our economy in this region is tremendous. So no timetable? No, I'd say within I, five years at the outside, hopefully three. Uh, and, and it sounds like uh, officially tomorrow we're talking about a team coming back to Seattle that's not named the Sonics. Yep. It was, as you know, I'm, I'm a little competitive sometimes. And when we lost the rain, um, I told my good friend, the mayor of Tacoma, that I was very sad. Um, and I'm sad for her now because they're coming back to Seattle. It's a great thing. It's one reason, as you know, I was able to get through the renovation of Memorial Stadium, which I think can be a great facility for soccer and other and high school football. But the rain coming back to Seattle is going to be great. Um, it shows that we are that world-class city, not just for men's team, but for women's team. The storm and the rain, fantastic. And what's the status with Memorial Stadium given uh, it seems like there have been deals after deals after deals after deals for 10 to 15 years, and it's never been pushed across the finish line. We got it done, though. It's now going to be the school board has put it in the levy to renovate it. Um, there's a partnership growing, pr public-private partnership, uh, and contemplates that if we want to do something more than the basic stadium, there'll be fundraising for that. So after a decade or more of people wrangling, can we fix it? It's actually slated to get done. Now, obviously, it's up to voters. They have to approve the levy. Um, but I'm very optimistic. It's that missing piece of the Seattle Center. Um, and we are, in a, we are in a civic rejuvenation right now in Seattle. And I think coming out of the pandemic, that's so important. Not just Climate Pledge Arena, but the waterfront park is really going to be remarkable. You can start to see it take shape. The viaduct being gone, so much more light gets to the sidewalks. It's quiet. And we're going to have a bridge that goes from the market to the new aquarium. It's going to be phenomenal. Speaking of deals, uh, there's one that, that you've worked on with the executive over City Hall Park. Uh, it still needs some approvals from a couple of different councils. Why do you think that that land swap is a good idea? I think it's a good idea for a couple of reasons. One is that land naturally has been part of that building over time. And I think creating a sense of place for the courthouse. A county courthouse is a special place. It's not just about the, the court system. It really is about the people's business. And so I think having the county, which is under the terms of the deal, it will continue to be open space in a park. They're still working on what that looks like. So we don't lose that. And in return, the city gets property that it needs for different things. But the one I'm probably most excited about is what we call the sliver on the river, which is this very small parcel uh, right on the Duwamish River that we need to complete a park at South Park, um, which is, as you know, a community that has really been overburdened by the economic impacts of COVID and before that, the environmental impacts of the pollution in the Duwamish River. So getting parcels like that to help complete what community needs, I think is great. So it's a win-win for everybody. Do you think the county can keep that area safer than what it's been under Seattle jurisdiction? So I think that, that the, um, you know, I think you have to take pre-COVID and post-COVID. Um, and it's kind of like life was BC before COVID and then after COVID. And, you know, before COVID, we'd actually made big improvements and significant improvements in that area, Second Avenue extension. Uh, then COVID hit and CDC said you have to leave encampments in place. We saw many more people migrate to the center cities. And so the population of, of visible homelessness increased. And now, you know, we have worked really hard to have places to bring people inside, standing at more shelter. We'll have 3,000 enhanced shelter beds in the city of Seattle. Not all 3,000 are enhanced, but almost. So when I came in, it was basically mats on the floor. Almost all of them now are enhanced, which means 24-7 connections with social services, five times as likely to lead to long-term housing. 3,000 uh, shelter beds 
would have fixed the problem or challenge under previous mayors, but it's just increased for a variety of reasons, some of them economic and some of them because Seattle is the place to get services. You know, six out of 10 of the people that we're supporting who are experiencing homelessness became homeless somewhere else. Um, it's one reason why I'm so bullish on having a regional authority so we can start as a region, you know, all the suburban cities together with Seattle really tackling the dual problems of affordable housing and helping people experiencing homelessness. So last question, do you have any regrets? You know, this has been an incredible honor. It's been hard the last two years, um, very challenging for me and for my family. Um, but I think that, you know, history calls you at different times. And at this moment, I'm really proud that what I and my team working together with public health and the governor and the executive and the people of Seattle have been able to do for, through the pandemic. And I think that when history's written again, they really will say that Seattle led the way. Um, and I'm, I am honored that I could have that role.